Welcome, welcome. We are here tonight to talk about jean jackets. They don't have to be jeans, but they have to be jackets. But I'm excited. We've got so many fun ideas for you. And, you know, <laughs> jean jackets are really, really popular. I said that to my son and he came back with a joke and it was pretty funny, but I can't remember the joke. So I'm sorry, you guys. Otherwise, I would put it in the email for tomorrow about jean jackets. We'll find it. I'll have to call him if he's if he's available. But anyway, we're going to talk tonight about 900, and we're excited to be here, and we're excited you're here. And so the goal is to answer your questions and to have fun and motivate you to make a few. I'll tell you, whenever someone in a workshop has a jean jacket, I always kind of feel bad because there's not a lot of changes to be made, and I feel like they don't get their money's worth. So if you've never done the jean jacket, do the jean jacket, 900 Carol's jacket, it's a POM, it's on sale, 10.99. It's so easy, it fits really, really well, it has the cup sizing, it's built into the front. It's just a fun jacket. So what we wanna do is take you on, you know, different levels to where you may not have thought about before with a jean jacket. So they are all over the place. So the goal is to incorporate them in your wardrobe and I think one thing about jean jackets, I was talking to a group of younger girls and asking them what they thought about jean jackets. And their biggest response was they're, they're supposed to be all about you. They're supposed to be personal. They're supposed to be, um, you know, like almost like works of art. I thought that was really interesting. So from a very young perspective, doesn't mean you have to do that. I didn't do that, but you know, you could do that. All right, so let's start with some photographs. We're gonna take you on a little photographic journey here. And we're going to show you kind of what I found, what inspired me, you know, and really what I wanted to do kind of with this whole concept. All right, so let's start. We're going to start with photo one. So jean jackets are not just waist length. So many times in workshops, someone will say, oh, I want it long. In fact, obviously the one I have on is lengthened. And this is kind of where I drew my inspiration from. Um, and I'm going to show you how to lengthen it. I've done it on an actual pattern. There's only one piece that's a little confusing. The rest is just literally adding length. But you do want to notice the length that she's adding. If you notice, it's the same length as her sleeve. So that's one option. We're going to cover several options here tonight. But that, no matter how tall you are, in fact, when you look at that photo, you can't even see how tall she is. You can't tell how tall she is because there's nothing around her. So the only thing that really gives her reference as to how tall she is is... Um, her arm to the bottom of the jacket. So be sure what you want to do is lengthen it to when you put your arm down, it's right at the sleeve, which is what I did on this one. For me, that's 10 inches, but it's different for everybody. So you just want to kind of, you know, just do some quick math. Put your arms down, put a jacket on that you like, figure out where it is, and then that's how many inches you're going to add to the bottom. This has a tie on it. I like ties. What I was going to tell you after I show you this picture, <laughs> is that most jean jackets are not worn closed. They're just not. They are really considered an accessory item and they're worn open 99% of the time, except for this one. But I wanted to show you this. I don't know that I really like a jean jacket closed, but again, it's gonna be up to you because it's yours. I think it's just too much fabric tied. You know, she is probably really thin, but she doesn't look it because she's got all this fluff around her. All right, so let's look and see what else we found. I just wanted you to see that so you could see that you could lengthen it and you could make it the length you wanted. All right, so this one, I love this. First off, denim and black has always been stylish. It's such a classic, a jean jacket and black jeans or black pants or whatever, denim and black. It's just a really nice pairing. That contrast is beautiful. So what I did is I did it in this case. I probably went to the logic side of me and here's what I did. So I got I, I got back to the guy that I bought these shirts from because a lot of times when you do that jean jacket, you really need that denim-y, stone-washed fabric. So I made this out of a shirt. The shirt is number 3133. That's where we put them up. They're just brand new up. We've put, But if you've bought them before, this is a vest. So you only need like a size small shirt or whatever size you need. You don't need the sleeves. But I, what I love about it is the I didn't even touch the collar. I completely used the collar from the jean jacket. All I did was I took out this seam, 
because there's typically a yolk on a pattern and cut it to the yolk size of the pattern. And then I cut out my sizes, I cut the band. I had to put a seam in, this, in the band because there, on the shirt itself, there wasn't one seam that was long enough to get the whole entire band. So I just put a seam and then I put that at center back. You could put two seams and put them at the side seams. That probably would be nice as well. But you can see that what I left here was the collar. Do you want to zoom in on this at all, Bill? You can see where I left the collar. And you, you still have this really rugged look there because it's just original. You still have the little buttonhole that was on the collar. I just love the way this looks. I really, really like it. I've, I've kind of, I love jean jackets out of like real denim. I know that doesn't make sense, real denim. Can you come on in, go slow? Sometimes we go too fast and we lose you all in the process. So we'll go slow so that we don't. Yeah, so you can still see the seam and kind of how that ripples. And that's the whole stonewash effect that you get when you use the shirt. Yeah, beautiful. Okay, so the buttonholes are new. What I did is I picked up the thread color. Um, and so you can pick up the thread color. Years ago, I won't tell anybody this story. I won't tell you what son, but I made my son a pair of jeans. And they fit beautifully. I was so excited. And I said, don't you love these? And he said, no. And I said, why? Why don't you love them? He said, nah, I don't know. And it took him a while to figure out what he didn't like was that they looked girly because of the color of the thread. So my kids are detailed. So when you are sewing jeans for yourself or for someone, I really personally think that that thread color is really important. So what I did is I went off the original shirt I went and matched the thread color, and now I'm an addict on thread color and matching. So all of my buttonholes and everything, honestly, they look like the real deal. They look like the original, right? Is my my persnickety detailed sons here agree on that one? <laughs> they look really good. And then I use the metal button. We have these metal buttons. I don't have them up. I'll have them up by tomorrow. We have some different colors, and I'll show you the different colors that we have. Um, so what I did is also I used... Um, the original stitching and I just sewed that on so that it, it looks like a double seam which it is a double seam but it's from the original shirt there's just so many fun things you can do it doesn't matter that you do it like mine the goal is that you just take that shirt and you just really get creative so in this case what I did is to get that same look I made it a vest and then I made 109 I did um, the hoodie and top and then for that hoodie what I did is I brought up the neck edge I just brought it up the length of the zipper. The fabric that I used uh, is 2952. Great fabric for something like this. It's just a, a great black draped fabric. Um, obviously, I did it long sleeve. The hood's back here. Zip up the front so that you can wear that jean jacket open. And then you could turn around and put this on many other things. To make it one, in the beginning when I was going to make it, I started sewing the sleeves in. I thought, you know why I do this? It doesn't make sense. It really makes more sense to me to wear it separately. And I put the zipper at the front to give it exactly that look. All right, so the dark shirt was 31.33, and then the fabric that went with it was 29.52. Okay, pattern 109, pattern number 900. Okay. And let's keep looking at our pictures. What do we got next here? Okay, I wanted you to see this because same look. Same look, it's just a, a light gray as opposed to a black. I really like the black better, so I wanted you to see it. But I did want you to see that there's a lot of denim bodies and different color things added onto it. You can see that this is not a whole entire hoodie. It's only the front insert because you look at the back of the jacket and there's just the hood and the front zipped part. So. When you look at pictures like this to get ideas, and there's so many ideas out there, you can just Google jean jackets, go shopping, they're just everywhere. And there's a lot of really fun things to do. All right, let's go to the next one, please. There's one I wanted to show you again. Now, this one is not a vest. That's actually, those sleeves are sewn in. And you can see she's just wearing like a matching shirt underneath. So either way, I love the hoodie and the jean jacket. I think it's a great look. And then notice just, you don't even notice what's below, so you could really wear anything. Just in general, you don't really want to wear denim top and denim bottom, 
But actually, as I've shopped, even in mannequins on high-end stores, I've actually seen denim jean jackets with denim bottoms. So I guess it's called your decision. <laughs> All right. All right. Here I wanted you to see that they're being made in so many different colors. It's the jean jacket body. Uh, this is actually 924 Tina's asymmetrical jacket. This is more the motorcycle jacket, but it's the same look, same thing, but yet it's still a jean jacket look. Even though you can switch up the colors, you still get that whole entire look, and I, I like it. I really like it. And you know what I like most about it? Notice that the shirt is tucked in, and for many of us, um, we wouldn't wear a shirt tucked in, but it gives you an opportunity. You don't have to tuck the shirt in. You can still wear it out. The shirt is longer than the jean jacket. It's a great look, but I just think it's a nice option to tuck it in, but stuff is still covered. Like that jacket does a really nice job of just covering you. Okay. And then next I wanted you to see this, mainly because I wanted you to see, um, I just really didn't like this jacket. It just was crooked. It was, you know, I just didn't like anything about it, but I wanted you to see the price. So if you decided you wanted to, or if you cut one side and you mess up and you just want to fix it, like I didn't see the back. So I don't know, you know, see how it's shorter on one side and longer than the other. I don't know. Oh, I know. I do know how it matches in the back. It's, it matches exactly the same. It's just shorter like that. And then it's, it's longer. It's asymmetric like that, you know, but I'm always wanting to show you stuff to give you ideas. Whether I like them or not is not the goal. How much is that jean jacket? About ninety. A thousand dollars. We can do that, can't we, ladies? <laughs> Someone said to me the other day they didn't think they were good enough to make a jean jacket. They didn't think their sewing skills were up to making a jean jacket. I would beg to differ. You could, sewing skills could be pretty. Um, you know, you could do it. You can do this. All right, let's go on. <laughs> I wanted you to see this one simply because the concept of a jean jacket, you know, we've talked a lot in the office, what is a jean jacket? It's really the yoke, the piece, three pieces up the front, the yoke in the back, the three pieces in the back, a collared and a two piece sleeve with a cuff and a bottom band. That's really what a jean jacket is. You see lots of variations of that. This one here is completely solid. I really like this because I think it takes it out of the world of jeans, not that you couldn't wear it with jeans. And I'm gonna take you to this little pink one right here that I did. Um, I, I just love this little pink one. I just really love it. This fabric here on this is 3114. So this is a straight linear um, fabric, 3114, you can pull it up. It's lightweight, it's just beautiful. Um, and so obviously what I did is I just turned it horizontal, turned it vertical, turned it on the bias, and then again with the front, horizontal, vertical, and bias. Um, the sleeves, generally you'll do the sleeves straight. This fabric is so easy to sew on. And then we have so many coordinating fabrics, we call them fraternal twins, that I did the dress, and the dress is out of um, 3050. It's that pink print. It's really beautiful. It's a black. So I did the buttons in black. Or they're not buttons. I'm sorry. They're, they're um, jean buttons. I guess they're called jean buttons. We do have those also. These are a matte black. They're just beautiful. So it really takes the outfit down and makes it very casual and yet simple. I can see any spring, summer day just throwing on a dress. This is 600. It's a shirt dress underneath and then just with a jean jacket over it. It's just comfortable. It's so easy and looks really good. So I think this is a great way to really blend comfort and style and blend it together to where it looks really pretty. Very easy sewing again. Um, certainly you could have done a vest and then a long sleeve dress, whatever you want to do. I, I'm more likely to make the sleeveless dress and I think then it has a little more versatility. Let's answer questions. We'll take a break and just answer some questions. Okay, um, is the fabric you're wearing denim? Not the fabric in the jacket, no. I have black jeans on, but um, not in, this, in the jean jacket. No, I'll go over that in just a minute. How would this jacket be with a zipper instead of buttons and or snaps? Um, you just have to change 
uh, keep in mind that whenever you have a button and buttonhole, you have an overlap. You have an underlay and an overlap, it's called. Overlay and underlap, sorry. Overlay and underlap. And so that um, takes away center front. So for instance, if you were to close this up, um, your center front is somewhere right, you know, the collar stops short of center front. So you'd have to take away that and then put a zipper in. I think if you were really not going to close it, I don't think those technicalities would make a difference. You could just put a zipper in and call it good. But keep in mind when you are choosing your size, I would highly recommend you not literally have it go all the way around your bust. You really want it to be open in the front. I've shown you a couple jean jackets were closed, but they're too, I don't know, they're not for warmth. They're, they're, they're an accessory, they're a fashion item, and they're just amazing. But so watch your size and be sure don't go too big. Don't go too big. Okay, easy enough. All right, but I think it'd be easy to put a zipper in. Doesn't have to be technically correct because you're going to wear it open anyway. Um, it's good to go. All right, any other questions? We're good? All right, let's keep going with our pictures. All right, so here we go is a white. So this is a tall order, but you're going to do like four jean jackets. And I'm telling you, you'll be amazed how much you'll wear them. Do one in solid white. We've got a couple white fabrics that would be perfect. I don't have the fabrics. But just go through and look at the whites. And I promise you, you'll wear these white jean jackets with just about everything. They really, I just, um, well, for Thursday night, there's a YouTube that you'll see. Anyway, a white jean jacket would go great with that outfit that I'm doing for Thursday night or that I did for Thursday night. So watch that. I think you'll really, really see that a white jean jacket and a black jean jacket. And there's a black cotton that we just put up, I don't know, a few days ago. And this is the black. Um, I don't have the fabric number, but it's 100%. It's a stretch cotton. It's beautiful. It would be absolutely perfect for a jean jacket. Yeah, you're going to look for that for me. It's, it's probably on the first page. You know, it's a black stretch cotton. I didn't get what it was, but it's just really nice. And even when I was putting it up, the whole intent was to put it up for a jean jacket. A black, it's that, oh, it'd have to be on the next, is that it? I'm sorry, you'll find it, they'll find it. Okay, so let's go on with photos. So you're gonna make a white jean jacket, and notice those buttons that are contrasting. Yep, 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 perfect. A metal contrast. All right, so in this case, um, the vest. The vest is really stylish. Notice she doesn't have a long sleeve. She doesn't have to have a long sleeve. It's just a little cap sleeve. This is again a great look. Just a really cute look and it's really popular for spring. Did you find it? What's the fabric number? 3120. 3120? Yeah. 3120. Just take a look at that. It would be great for a jean jacket just so you know. It's a solid black and it's a dynamo as far as color goes and as far as treatment. This is a black jean jacket. I didn't, it is not in that fabric. I've had this jean jacket, but this black, but I will tell you that it has definitely gotten its wear. It has been worn and worn and worn and worn and worn. <laughs> but the greatest thing about it is, as you can see, like these are the new Tommy's pants. And a lot of times when you think about, okay, I love the pants. What am I going to wear with them? And when I think a garment, I'm always thinking whole outfit. So what am I going to wear with them? You always can throw on a jean jacket. If it's more in the summer and it's a little wa warmer, make a sleeveless jean jacket and then make a, a t-shirt to go underneath with sleeves. And so you can really can just pick up this whole outfit. I did this with a black underneath because I had already had it made. It's the cowl. But you could easily do a white underneath and you could see it would just give it a whole different look. So there's just the pieces are such great classic pieces. You can really mix and match them really nicely. Okay, I think 700 series is on right now and we are talking about the jean jacket. It's one of our core pieces, so I think it's just a really valuable jacket to put on. I haven't bought non-stretch denim before. What weight of denim do you recommend for jackets? I wouldn't go any heavier than six ounce. Six ounce is, you know, I don't even buy six ounce anymore. Um, I'm going to show you mine, and I think it's a three or four ounce that we use. Not if, it, if you're not using the shirts, um, we've got a couple denims down there, and I think there are threes and fours. 
but it's just a little bit outdated. That heavier denim is just really not what they're using that much anymore. Denim has gotten lighter and lighter and lighter because people really wear it year round. They want to wear it in the summertime. They want to wear jeans, but the jeans are just much lighter than they used to be. What fabric are you wearing? I'll get to it in just a second here. Why doesn't your jacket come close at the bottom? Because It does if I wanted it to, but I don't want it to. I want it to hang open. So that was the look I wanted. And so I went down in size so that it would just stay open all the way. If you make a jacket that closes and you wear it open, it looks too big. It just doesn't look good at all. So if you're going to fit a jacket and you want it to close, close it. If you want to wear it open, don't fit it because when you wear it open, it will look too, it'll look too baggy. Okay. Is the black material for the dress under the pink jacket sheer? No, no, it's not. You can see it online. It's not sheer. Um, it's a really beautiful, I believe it's a silk. Can you zoom on in the zipper and trim details on the black jacket? On this one right here, Britt. You guys will zoom in on that and you can see that. And we will carry on with pictures. This is snaps on this one. And then I just put zippers in there to be funny. Like I, I literally stitched that to where it can't move. This is just my little funky sense of humor, which y'all know is a little weird. I decided that you'd not, you would not see a jacket in the store that looked like that. Maybe that's the reason I decided to, <laughs> to do it. Wanted to make sure it was unique. All right, let's go to photos. All right, I wanted you to see this one. I like this. I thought it was, I didn't make it, but it's the band, and then there's just an additional piece on before. I've actually done this one very similar to this before. Um, I like it. It gives it a little bit of shape. Your pieces as you go to the bottom have to have a little bit of flair to them. Um, but I do like it. What I did, I did a longer jacket, but what I did is I just put elastic in the back rather than having that band there. My band is at the bottom. I'll show it to you in just a second. All right, let's go to that next one. Here's the one I really kind of focused on, although I did a band at the bottom. But if you notice, there's a, a welt pocket. Uh, the one I have on doesn't have a welt, but this one back here does. Before we go to that one, let's go to this one. Let's go to this one because... Um, I, I think of all of them, I probably never have a favorite, but I, I just think this is my favorite because I've always wanted a jean jacket that really was stone washed. And so I used the light blue shirt. I used the 3134 on this. And so you can see that it's still, you know, like I even used the sleeves. I literally took the sleeves out, recut, um, the top of the sleeve and kind of fix the underarm seam. Uh, the yoke, I took this out and recut the bottom pieces. I had so much fun doing this stuff, you guys. So see, it's the original collar. Um, I just cut the yoke to, to go into that length. And then I bedazzled the bejeezers out of it <laughs> because I just loved it. I loved it. I saw one at Neiman's and it was really like decorative. So I actually used four sheets of crystals. I used two blacks and two, you know, the whites. And I just went crazy. So you can see it's more black up here and then it goes lighter down here. And again, um, I saw what it means that was like that. It had a lot of crystals on it and I just really, really liked it. And I really like, I like everything. Sorry about that. I say, I say like too much, but I really like it. <laughs> but anyway, um, I did contrast the, these are like a, we have these buttons, they're these jean no-sew buttons. We have these four colors. So I used a different color on all of them. This is like a, kind of like a, a brushed silver. And then one has a black, oh, with a pink, the matte on the black, I put on the pink. And this one I did like a, a gold because it matches, it matched the thread to me. And this other one I sh I'll show you is kind of a gray. It, this is more like a gunmetal. So I did it whatever color kind of matched the, the jacket that I was doing. But this I didn't do any changes other than I used a shirt that was existing. I took the sleeve out and inserted it in. All of your stitching just 
if you'll notice, it's um, quarter inch, I mean, I'm sorry, three eighths of a, of a apart from one another. And then when you put the sleeve in, your stitching is on the yoke, not the sleeve. So your seam is pressed to the inside of the garment or to the center of the garment. And your stitching is on, I mean, you can look at a men's shirt and see that. You can look at many things and see that, but just a note to make it look, you know, super good. You want that stitching to be on the yoke, not on the sleeve. And the seam is gonna go in toward the center of the garment. But it was fun top stitching all this. I just sat and watched movies and top stitched away all day. <laughs> I kind of did a mass thing, but I had to keep changing my thread because I do think that thread color, I know, I mean, I'm gonna hammer this home. I think it makes a big difference. How did you make the band at the waist? How wide does it need to be cut? And then, well, this is in the pattern. The band's in the pattern. I just followed the pattern. The only thing I did differently on this is because I started with a men's shirt, I had to seam it. So right at center back, there's a seam right there. On both of the ones I used a shirt for, um, you're not gonna find, you know, the, you don't have fabric, you don't have yardage, you just have a shirt. So I actually pieced it and that's off the pattern, okay? I'm fitting Ann's top, so I need to move the shoulder seam forward three fourths inch. Is this going to be too much change for the sleeve? No, you just do the same thing to the sleeve. If you're moving the shoulder seam forward three fourths inch, then you do the same thing. Whatever you do to that armhole, you do to the sleeve, as far as moving the shoulder seam. And then they'll match. As long as they match before, they'll match after, as long as you do it right. All right. I have two yards of that lovely vegan leather you had on the site last fall. It's a tan color. Would that work well for the jean worn jacket? That would be a home run. It would actually be a home run. Now, keep in mind, I probably wouldn't pull that out spring. You know, I guess it depends on where you live. That's really more of a fall look. If you notice with all the jean jackets, if you're going denim, if you're, I mean, if you're not going denim, you want to go, that's why I went the pink. It's really trendy. I did black and white. It's really trendy. Um, I, I wanted to keep it with the spring colors, but it's your call. But yes, I would use it. I probably would just wait until either make it and wear it in fall, but you probably don't want to wear that at this time of year. Does that make sense? Hope that makes sense. Previous wasted jacket suggestions. Previous wasted jacket suggestions. Oh, you mean the picture we showed you? The wasted jacket, I would use 900, I think. Let's go back in pictures here for just a second. I think I would just use 900. Yeah, this is 900. It's the one I have on. I'll show you how to make it in just a minute, but you still want to use 900. If you go back to the one that had that one, I would still use nine. That is 900. You're just going to add pieces to the bottom of the band. So instead of doubling the band, you've got it double. It finishes the jacket. Just do single and just continue the facing all the way down and just add those pieces in. Yep. When you top stitch a 3 8 inch of that off the seam allowance. Um, yeah. But it looks really good. It's what's, it was on the original thing. But it, they stay in place. I just pressed them and they stayed in place and top stitched twice. All right, so let's go to the next picture. I wanted you to see this because this is when a, a jean jacket starts to take on a blouse look and it's not difficult to do this and I really liked it. So like the back of the cuffs, um, I've seen this a lot in ready to wear, which is why I wanted to mention it to you. The back of the cuffs, you could do a different fabric, the collar, a different fabric. And then because the front facing is done uh, in the same, it, it doesn't show, it doesn't show until it flips back. You could actually do the front piece, just a different fabric, except it wouldn't go all the way up. Yeah, you just have to fiddle with this a little bit. I really like this. It really looks blousey and it looks casual. I just really liked it and I wanted you to see it. Very simple to do, same properties, same denim, same everything. And you know what I'm really looking forward to is beating my denim up. I have not had a chance to really take it and just kind of sand it and wash it and 
throw it under my wheel of my tire on my car. I haven't had a chance to really beat it up, but I just love denim that's beat up. So, I mean, I, I it'll get beat up because I've done other jackets and they do get beat up, but it's just not beat up yet. They're too pretty. All right. I wanted you to see this because there is a lot of beautiful work that is done on the backs of these denim jackets. And I thought this was really pretty. You know, it remind, for some reason it reminded me of Bob Ross and, you know, Happy Little Mistakes. Um, you can't do wrong. You can't, and it's just a lot of fun. In the Series 700, I think, yeah, it's 700, I have on a, a jean jacket that we painted and we painted it with Sharpies. And so for those of you who have that series, watch that show and it'll take you on a whole nother level of jean jackets. They're just fun. They're just a lot of fun. And there's so many things you can do with them. Okay, so let's go to the next one. All right, so this is my favorite. I don't know about my favorite, but I really wanted to show it to you. Um, I did a, you know, what you want to decide first is how long you want it. And so for me, I decided I, I didn't want it this long. I knew that if it was this long for me, I would not wear it. Uh, you know, that's just a little bit too long for me. I like it. I like looking at it, but I bought um, sweaters and things that are that long and I never wear them. I just feel like they're a little bit too matronly. That's just an opinion is all that is. So what I did is I did mine to my knee. I love knee length things, just a little bit above the knee. So for me, that was 40 inches. I think I did it at 30 Eight, 38 roughly right in there a little bit above the knee um, and then I want to show you the pattern work that it takes to do that now one thing I love about like a little duster like this is I love pockets I just love pockets so I did do a welt in there this is like a trench coat pocket is what's on that jacket right there if you look really closely so that's what I did on this one um, this is fabric 30 20 30, 20, and then underneath, I love this. I had done this, you guys, this was the cow we changed the sleeve on. This was 30, 85, I love that print. Love that print, it looks so nice together. And I had already done the jacket when we did when I did the print, and so I kind of did it to match, but it worked, it worked really well for both. You really just wanna think about what is it you have, what is it you like, what direction are you going, and it really just makes such a nice grouping. So with this one, what I want to do is I want to bring up the, uh, I think I numbered, numbered it 15, Benjamin? yeah, number 15. I want you to look at lengthening because there's just a couple issues when you lengthen that you want to be aware of. And I circled them, um, number three. So number three convenes, converges, I guess would be the better word. It converges to where it's only like an, two inches wide at the bottom. It depends on the size but it's only two inches wide, so you can't possibly lengthen that piece. So each of my pieces, by the time I measured the top, I needed to add 18 inches. And so I wanted you to notice that I, at piece number three especially, the bottom is still two inches, and then I drew it up to where the bust would be. So that number three, where that circle is, is where the bust roughly is. And so you just draw new angled lines that go to the bottom, you draw the width first, and then you just merge it into the top piece. You can see all the rest of those pieces, the four, the two, the facing needs to be lengthened, the six and the seven, all of those can just be lengthened. If you wanna add, again, I was not worried about closing this jacket. If you wanna add seam allowance and you want more, you can add some more distance on the side. Again, just be aware that if it's too close and then worn open, it will just look sloppy, especially on a longer jacket. So, this particular fabric had a great selvage. So if you notice at the bottom what I did, and, and we can probably get a little close up of that, I left the selvage. So I, we can show the selvage on the collar if you want to come up there, whatever's easier for you. So I cut out, like the edge of the collar is straight, the outside edge. So I just laid that on the selvage and it's the neck edge that's curved and so it makes a great little collar up because it's so cool looking. It's so rugged and raw looking. I guess that's the best way to say it. So all my pieces I laid at the bottom and then I cut up. And then when I sewed them, because I was serging this all together, I actually started at the bottom just to kind of make sure that 
you know, because if it's uneven, you can't cut it off at the bottom. You want to make sure that those selvages are all coming in together. And I love the look. It's just so fun and so casual. I can just see myself wearing this over and over and over. Um, the thread color I did was like a golden color. It's like a tannish golden. And then I chose the buttons that kind of what I felt like matched the denim. Again, your stitching is on the yoke. It's not on the sleeve. Um, and put pockets, great pockets. Now what I did on the back, it's because my plan is to wear this open with an outfit underneath, you know, maybe jeans, maybe, you know, lots of things you could wear it with, like everything. Talk about a great travel garment that goes a long ways. It would absolutely be something like this. So I just took a piece of elastic, it's one inch wide, uh, measure the back, do, you know, divide by three and make the elastic two of them. So if it's 18 inches, you divide by three, which would be six, and make the elastic 12, and you'd stretch it from where you want. I went from side seam to side seam with 12 inches of elastic on 18 inch back. Whatever your back is, just measure it, divide by three, and do your elastic to two of them. And then put it on, mark your waist, and then stretch from piece to piece. I love it, it's so good looking. But again, I'm really looking forward to it getting a little roughened, like, no more pressing, it's done, it's complete, uh, it's ready to go. It's ready to be abused and used, and I love it. Okay, if you were, would you need to do this with a three piece, would you need to do this with three piece if you were only adding a few inches? Yes, because that piece, oh, number three, I see what you're saying, with piece number three, Oh, I got you. Okay, yes, because it's like two, it's only two inches wide. Even if you were adding two inches, it would be a point, and that's not what you want. So you'd have, you got to think about that no matter how much you're adding. You want to think about keeping it, preserving the width at the bottom, and then blending it in. Also, you have to think about if you change the, the you know, if you lengthen it, which you can do, you just got to be careful of the band that whatever amount you add to whatever pieces you're using that you add the same amount to the band so that you get that one-to-one -one on the band okay i'm noticing the young ladies who have amazing waist tucking in their tops into the waistband which sits at their waist is this a new trend i don't think it's new but it's a great look and it's very slimming so even if you're not feeling young or thin to tuck in and blouse under a jean jacket is a really positive look so it, please don't think it's young and thin. It should be old and not thin. They both are really good looks, okay? Do you hand sew your buttons on or do you have any tricks up your sleeve? I have no tricks up my sleeve except to, these are hammered on. There's no sewing. I sewed on about 40 buttons in about 30 minutes <laughs> because I took a hammer and went whap. It was great. It was really easy and fun. So that's, I like the buttons because I think they look like a jean jacket, but they're also pretty quick. So like I said, we'll have them up tomorrow. They're really cool looking and they're not expensive. They're really a lot of fun. Okay, so let's go back to photos for a minute. Now I want to go back to that one where I lengthened, if you don't mind, that number 15, I think it was. Okay, so I want to look at this for a minute because once I lengthened it to make the longer one, I just took length away to make the one I have on. So if I lengthen the duster one 15 inches, I lengthen this one only 10. Because it's the length of my sleeve when I put my arm down. It's that same length the first one I showed you. Except with this one, what I decided to do is do knit sleeves. So I did four fabrics on this one. I did, you can see that I did this first square thing, which is 3077. And then the hole in the middle you can see through, or I don't know if you can see through it, but that is 3078, and I used a yard of each. And then the stuff up at the top here is bias, and the bias is 3075, and then I did a knit sleeve. And the knit sleeve is 3082. So let me explain to you why I did all that. When you're doing a jean jacket, and I've had many women in workshops come in and say, okay, I've got all these fabrics and I want to make a jean jacket. And they come in, try not to do too many fabrics. 
Now again, I don't want to stifle anybody's creative process, but if you make too many Jean Jack, too many fabrics, I would limit it to three is what I'm saying to you. It just turns out to be a mess, but it's your mess. So if you like it, that's good. But I'm telling you from a perspective of design, you really don't want to go over three colors, three fabrics. So in this case, however, the sleeve, the knit sleeve, the texture really blends nicely with this holy fabric. So the texture is the 31, I'm sorry, 3082, and the holes are the 3078. I think if you look at these fabrics and look at them together, you can see what I was doing. Um, the knit, I didn't want to sew the bottom band with a knit. I didn't want to sew the collar with a knit. So I wanted a woven on those pieces, um, but I wanted a knit for the sleeves. So I didn't have to do all the sleeves on here. Basically, I used my knit armhole on my jean jacket. Jean jacket is a blouse. A jean jacket is a blouse. So just kind of keep that in mind. So it has a blouse armhole and a blouse sleeve. So if you decide you want to do it out of a knit, which is what I did, you've got to put on your knit armhole and use your knit sleeve. And I love this. It is so comfortable. I, I just really, really like it. So I just lengthened it my 10 inches. I had already changed all my pieces from this longer one that was 18 inches. So I just folded up eight inches and I was ready to do it. This one, remember I used the selvage at the bottom. This one, I did put a band and the band that I put on was the same holy fabric that's in the sides and then on the collar, okay? Okay, is the collar with a selvage edge a single layer? No, I still did two layers because you sandwich the neck edge in between the collar and you need two layers. So I would recommend, what I did on the on this selvage edge is I just put the wrong sides together. I just stitched the ends. And then I, I did a stitch right here next to the selvage that just kept the selvage together. So they're actually stitched together just right below the selvage there. And then you can go ahead and turn up the collar and insert the bodice underneath. So even if you're doing a selvage edge, you really want to have two layers to insert and you're folding over. You're finishing the neck edge with that collar is really what you're doing. Do you sell different colors of jean buttons on your site? I do. I have four different colors, y'all. We just don't have them up. We'll have them up tomorrow. If not late tonight, tomorrow. What fabric did you use on the back of the jacket you have on? Um, those same three fabrics. So the, the bias piece is 3075. The side panel is 3077. If you notice, you guys, they match at the sides. Be careful of that. Um, at first, I didn't really pay attention because I thought, well, there'll be something in between. And man, when I sewed the first one, it was like, oh my gosh, that looks so bad. So, um, you know, I for some reason, I just didn't really figure out. See, you can see that side seam there and you can't match it, um, you know, the side seam because the side seam has shaping into it, but you can match it going around. So you want to make sure that you do because it just really looked bad if you didn't. Um, so the holy fabric is 3078, and then the sleeves was 3082. Can't tell. Are the seams flat felled on the denim top? Your top is so cute. Thanks. I, I, I did flat fell on ev everything. Now, it's not a real f flat fell. It's faux. So basically, I just surged it all together and then did two rows of stitching. I did it on everything. Because to me, that's, what a, that's kind of what a jean jacket is. To me. I mean, even on these. I surged it together, two rows of stitching. Can you turn around so we can see the back? When will the spring patterns be mailed out? We've already started. We have them. We started earlier today. We'll be shipping all through Saturday. So by Saturday, we'll be all done. So everybody will get them like any day now. Thanks so much for your patience. I cannot believe what we went through. It's just so much. I'm so mad. I can't even start into it. <laughs> Um, but anyway, like, anyway, like, I, blah, <laughs> we won't go there. Anyway, the good news is we have them. And we, like I said, we started shipping today. We'll have everything out by Saturday and you all will have your spring patterns. And I'm so excited because I've made so many of them already that it's really fun. And I know you're waiting. I know you've been really patient. 
since it's a blouse, is that reason the buttonholes are vertical? Yes, on a jean jacket. And you also have a, um, you know, you have the tab. I mean, this is not a separate piece, but it's stitched, it's top stitched and created. So the buttonholes are vertical. But again, keep in mind, you're not looking to close this jean jacket, okay? The bottom buttonhole usually is horizontal, just a little, that's all in the pattern. We, you know, we tell you all that. Does the selvage, that's a selvage, collar wash and lay straight or waffle up on the edge? Oh, this one right here? If it waffles, you just press it. I've washed everything and I didn't have any issues with it at all. It's just a beautiful denim. You know, there's so many different qualities of denim that I think it's always hard to know, but this is such a beautiful denim. It's really pretty. Very pretty stuff. All right, what else? Jean jackets, new patterns. We got the whole thing. Like I love these Tommy's pants and that's my new look. You're gonna see me in this, the jean jacket and the pants. I think they're so cute. Then you just wear a little black flat, black tennis shoes, you know, whatever you're comfortable in and you are just hot out on the town. <laughs> All right, are we good? Any questions you guys? We have hot pizza waiting downstairs. <laughs> we can go have dinner. It was delivered a little bit late, so we didn't get a chance to eat beforehand. I shouldn't tell you all that, huh? All right, so you guys can have 12 more minutes to sew. That's a good thing. In two weeks, what I wanna do is, you know, I have done a spring sewing, but I really wanna do it a, another one because I keep seeing so many great things and so many beautiful fabrics. I think, honestly, we have more beautiful fabrics than I've seen in a long time. I'm so impressed with our fabrics. And, I mean, it's not me. I'm just buying them. But they're just beautiful. And the quality we're getting, Rachel Comey, I mean, on and on and on, of all the different designers, it's just so exciting. And the prices are ridiculously low. So we're just so excited to have them. Um, is there a code word to get the sale price on your fabrics? There's no code word. We send out an email. We send out an email. You guys, what we do is we always, when they first go up, we put them cheaper. So I kind of put them a little bit on sale first to give you guys a break if you buy them newer. And then like after two or three days, we'll actually put the price up to the regular price. So I just started doing that just to kind of, I don't know, I think it's kind of like a little pre-sale thing. Anyway. Hi Peggy, if you don't recommend you close the jean jacket, which pattern do you suggest for someone who needs to close up the jacket? I'm in a wheelchair and they rub in the wheels. Aha. Uh -huh. So let me give you a tip. Um, typically when a jacket's open, it's gonna have a tendency, even if it closes up and is straight like mine is, it'll still have a tendency to separate more at the hips than um, just by wearing it. So I would recommend, and you don't have to close it if you don't want to, even if you're in the wheelchair, you're gonna put a dart, and I'm gonna do it on me so you can see the difference, right about the waist, because that's where you're sitting, and that's where your body changes angles. You're gonna put a dart in, and do a muslin. You're gonna put a dart in your pattern. If you're in a wheelchair, I'm going to assume that you're probably in that wheelchair all the time. So the jacket will probably look a little funny standing, but it will look really nice sitting. So right around the waist area, you're going to take a dart and I would make that dart like a good two inches and it's going to taper to nothing over at the side because you're so much shorter in the front than you are obviously in the back. Now what that will do, I don't know if you can see it on me, but it's actually pulling it in to the middle. So when you take this big old dart here, it actually pulls the jacket into your body and I don't know that you'll even have to close it because it'll pull it so much in it won't be able to go out. Now that's your call. If you want to close a jean jacket, you can just buy, make it your size of your bust. You don't have to leave it open. I'm just saying that for most of you, um, you want to wear it open because it looks nicer open. But if you're sitting and you're sitting all the time, do this large dart, do it right about the waist. It will shorten the front and it will bring the front in together so that it doesn't hang out into the wheels. All right? It's amazing. It's a great little trick. Is there a code word to get the sale price on your fabrics you put? 
on sale today. Yes, but the sale isn't showing. I didn't put up any fabrics today. I only put up the shirts, you guys. Yeah, that's all I put up is the two shirts. So um, everything else is the price it is. The fabrics, the sale fabrics are on sale, but there's no code. They're just marked on the page. The like pages 13, 14, 15, something like that. They're, they're marked down. All right, anything else I can answer for you? You guys, I have to say thank you for all the PBS support. Your donations, the two patterns, the 700 series, you know, it's just really exciting and we really appreciate it. And we're actually getting ready to do another series. That is going to be so cool. Anyway, <laughs> thanks everybody. Thanks so much for your support. We will see you in two weeks. Happy sewing from Silhouette Patterns. Bye.